Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be talking about how my featherweight went at day one of Robo Wars Nationals here in Australia. Now, it is only going to be a day one coverage. Uh, day two is going to be done by Robo Wars themselves. So at the end of this video and in the links in the description below, I'll link to the Facebook page and YouTube channel where hopefully day two will come out in the next couple of months. When that does come out, I will post another little quick uh, promo video here so that you guys can go and check that out. But for now, we're going to go ahead and talk about day one. So before we kind of get right into the fights, there was a tiny little bit of stuff that I did to very, very obvious between uh, the fights in America and the fights in Australia. Those were I changed the electronic system over, so I went from running uh, two big batteries uh, for everything at 4S to running a one big battery for the weapon at 6S and one smaller battery for the wheels at 4S. And what all this basically means is that the weapon is now running on a higher voltage, which means it spins faster. And I think, think, spins up a little bit faster. Well, that was the idea anyway. Um, so going into the first fight now, I kind of, I got the robot over, I did all these changes and I got the robot over there fine. It spun up in the prelim testing and safety checks and stuff before the event. That was all good. And then they announced the first fight. So for me, this was quite exciting. I was fighting Prowler. Now Prowler and I kind of have a little bit of a history. Prowler, I faced uh, back a couple of years ago with my very first 13 kilo robot, which was literally just a wedge. Back then, in those days, uh, Prowler pushed me around the box for three minutes and just cut the top of me completely and totally, managing to nick my power link at one point. Thankfully, it was held in place with zip ties and it didn't actually break, it just fell inside the robot. It had a nasty gash on it, but the whole robot kept moving because it was all uh, safe and secure inside the robot after it had been semi-cut through. Uh, so I was really excited about this fight because it was finally time to uh, to fight him again and this time around I had a weapon and I was keen. I was going to spin that weapon off and I was going to hit him with it. That was the plan going into this. That's all I really cared about. I wanted that weapon to spin and I wanted to hit him. So let's have a look at how that fight went.
So that didn't go very well. The weapon didn't spin and I didn't hit him. And what happened was exactly the same thing as what happened the last time I fought him. He pushed me around the box for three minutes and he got to just cut away at me as much as he liked, which was very sad. Um, but it leaves us with a big, big question. Why? Why did the weapon not spin up? Why did it spin up in, in testing, in safeties, and not spin up in this fight? And the answer to that question took hours, literally hours to get to the bottom of. For a little while, I thought it might have just been an ESC connection uh, was a little bit awry, so I did check all my ESC connections. I re-plugged everything, made sure it was all tight, put it back in the test box, and it was not spinning up. And in fact, what was happening there is that the ESC was resetting every time I tried to spin the weapon up, which is a bad sign, because that means the motor is drawing way too much current, and the ESC is just going, nope, I can't do this, you're on your own, and just turning itself off before it tries to spin the weapon up. So the very next thing to do was to pull out the weapon motor and work out what was going on. When I pulled this weapon motor out, it was very, very crunchy. I've fixed this weapon motor now, but at the time, if you turned it one way and then the other, it would get caught and click very, very uh, painfully, some would say. So I opened the weapon motor up and I found a tiny, tiny little piece of metal in here, which was just big enough to get in between the magnets and the uh, motor coils in here and jam the whole motor up and stop it from moving. So I threw this motor to the side, I put my spare motor in, I begged and borrowed a 100 amp ESC from another builder, Michael, and yeah, I thought that that would be it. I think I thought that you know I would bolt everything back together and we would be good to go. I then dropped that in the arena, and it kind of spun up, but didn't really. So there was another issue at play here, and that's when I realized that I had made a mistake. I had brought the wrong M4 bolts. I'd actually bought bolts that were supposed to go in any Are You OK, which of course everything got muddled up when I got uh, I was coming back from the States. So the bolts that were supposed to mount into the top of this brushless motor were too long. And what had actually happened with this brushless motor is that those screws had hit the magnets and just a little, either a little piece of magnet or a little piece of screw had been worn off the end and jammed itself in the motor. So my ESC was dead because it had basically fried when all of this stuff had happened. I had the 100 amp ESC, which I hadn't managed to blow up, thankfully, um, and I knew what the problem was. So I shortened my bolts down, bolted the motor back in, sat it in the arena, and it seemed to work. Next up, I was facing uh, Fortunate Sun, which was actually done by Steve, another builder here in Adelaide, and driven by Owen, who, if you watch my channel for a little while, he drives Blade Tip, and I've talked about him in the past. He is a kid, but he is a really, really good driver. So going into this one, my hope was that the weapon would spin. I mean, my plan is always to spin the weapon up and hit people, but obviously I've just had a whole day of the weapon not spinning and there being problem after problem after problem getting that weapon spinning. So I didn't know what to think. Um, so I was just hoping, fingers crossed, that the weapon would spin up uh, when I actually put it into the arena. So let's have a look at how this all went. Maybe both driving on one wheel, I just took the 
So that was an interesting fight. Yes, there was smoke out of the back of me halfway through. I blew up the borrowed speed controller. My bad. Uh, so I got a couple of good hits in there. And as you could kind of see in that fight, uh, my wheels started really failing. That was actually because the hubs inside the wheels, so the wheels themselves are a printed rubber. We'll talk about this in the robot breakdown that I'm gonna do in probably two or three weeks time. Uh, so the wheels themselves are printed rubber, but then the actual hub itself was made out of HDPE and threaded to sit on the drill motor that drives the whole robot round. It's not a great solution, as I found out. And what actually happens is when you uh, flick the motors back and forward too hard, you round out the thread inside the plastic and it stops. It stops working because it just doesn't have any grip on those hubs anymore. And that's what happened in this fight. I lost drive, not because the motor died or the ESC died, literally the hub died inside the wheel. So if I make them out of aluminium next time, I think we'll be fine. They were totally okay. The problem was that between that fight and the Prowler fight, I'd kind of used up all of my spares for the actual hubs themselves. So coming off the back of this fight, I'm down a speed controller and I'm down all my wheels. I, the wheels on both sides were having the same issue. Uh, one of them was less bad than the other one, which is how I was kind of able to struggle around the arena at the end there. I did win the fight, I think mostly based on the damage at the start of the fight, because uh, Steve's frame rails are bent all the way to one side, which is uh, a lot of damage. I'm really happy with the amount of damage that the weapon can do, but at the moment I'm, I'm having reliability issues at this stage in the competition. So I do the only thing that I can do. I, uh, I go to Steve and I apologize profusely for destroying his robot or destroying the frame rails inside of his robot and I ask very nicely to borrow some of his red wheels. He thankfully lets me borrow some red wheels and then I am still in need of a speed controller uh, for my weapon. So I did, I have Vesks here in the house and I tried well, I had them sat with all the stuff I was gonna take with me over to the competition and did not pack them. So I went asking around because I had no spares of my speed controller. Thankfully, Steve, the guy who, not the guy who built Fortunate Son, but Steve, the guy who runs the events, he also built uh, Death Roll and Great White. Death Roll being the BattleBots version and Great White being the This Is Fighting Robots and King of Bot version. He had a uh, great white there and I would manage to borrow a Vesk from him. So the last thing I did at the end of day one was knowing I had a redemption fight early the next morning, I swapped the wheels over and I swapped the ESC over 
and there was no time to test anything. We're going into day two with one win and one loss, and what we're going in with is something that's not my robot. It's very bodged together, and it's, it's, it's questionable as to whether or not those red wheels are even gonna to touch the ground when we hit the ground running the next day. The next fight, I will say, I think I can say who my next fight was. My next fight was against a very dangerous vertical spinner, and if I remember, I'll put some footage of him happening uh, here. He had a four kilo vertical drum disc weapon that even when it was spinning down, managed to throw his opponent over, like flick them up and over three times in a fight. While the weapon was spinning down, it was crazy. I was really, really worried about this weapon and this fight. But as I said, I am not allowed to talk about that and I don't have any footage from day two. So I will put in the description below links to Robo Wars Australia's YouTube channel and also their Facebook page. I will also, as I said at the start of this, I will make a video when all of this stuff comes out, wherever it's being released, I will let you guys know because day two was good. There's some good stuff in there, not only, well, <laughs> well, you'll see how my robots went, but there's some really good stuff in there. There's some really good hits, there's some really good fights. It's definitely worth checking out as soon as Robot Wars Australia, Robo Wars Australia gets it out. So there you go, a bit of a shorter one this week, because uh, I only have the two fights I can talk about. But I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.